happens to have been institutionalized on the African continent, especially in those countries where leaders treat their citizens as if they were subjects without any constitutional rights. My colleague Paul Sisko has more on the story. When politicians don't make decisions to benefit the public, but rather themselves, this is corruption. If you live in the world, have access to a free press, you read and hear of corruption any day, anywhere. This week alone, China, influence peddling, family ties bring riches. We know corruption is a problem around the world, but how bad is it and what can be done? Mexico, the United States, bribery, cover-up, banks, businesses, fraud. We learn of more every day. The highest levels of corruption are in countries plagued by conflict and poverty. Corruption doesn't just fuel such problems, it makes them very difficult to stop. Transparency International studies and maps corruption around the world. That map is a sea of red. The Corruption Perceptions Index forces governments around the world to take notice of corruption. But recognizing the problem is only part of the solution. Nigerians last week celebrated the sentencing in Britain of James Ibori, a former governor of one of the nation's richest oil states. Ibori got 13 years. I'm very much happy. As a Nigeria, very much happy. Nigerian civil servant Ogobisan Akim. But it shows that justice will prevail in this country. Thousands of, thousands of Iboris are still in this country, looting the treasure of the state and still walking around the streets. Lawyers at the federal court in Lagos had mixed reactions. It is um, a very, very good development um, and, and, and a plus, you know, for the, the fight against corruption. You know, whether the conviction was in Nigeria or not, the important thing is that there are lessons to be learned from this. For the judicial system in Nigeria, it is a challenge. A challenge in the sense that the federal high court in, uh, in Lagos uh, 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 held that Ibori had no case to answer of all the 170 count charge that was filed against Ibori. But unfortunately, in the UK, it is a different story. So it is a challenge to the, to the Nigerian judiciary. The Nigerian pleaded guilty to embezzling nearly $80 million, and he'd been living and investing in London for years. And according to a report presented to Nigeria's Parliament Tuesday, the National Treasury lost $6.8 billion because of corruption and mismanagement of its controversial fuel subsidy program from 2009 to 2011. High-level graft has been rampant for decades in Nigeria. The report comes just three months after a failed attempt to remove fuel subsidies and vindicates government critics who argued unchecked corruption not rising demands for fuel caused the cost of the fuel subsidy program to spiral. But countries can and do improve. For Africa, the combination of abundant natural resources, a history of autocratic and unaccountable government, as well as conflict and poverty across the continent, pose huge challenges to the fight against corruption. The solution, according to Transparency International, is for citizens to demand accountability from their leaders and for governments to make decisions not for themselves, but for their citizens. Paul Sisko, VOA News. Thanks, Paul, for that report. Uh